So a quick update, we got stuck in the sand. Been trying for an hour to get out. Apparently it happens all the time. Slept quite well, apart from this mosquito <coughs> kept going in my ear, waking me up, sort of merged into my dreams. Um, but I destroyed it this morning after my coffee. And no mosquito is safe around me. So it, it takes me a couple of days to sort of adjust to any sort of change, any situation. Um, obviously I spent three months at the resort, so I was quite sort of content swimming and sunbathing. So a bit of a shock to the system, if I'm honest. But the sense of freedom you get is just unreal. You just can't beat it. All I do know is I don't think I'll ever be able to go back to a normal life, whatever normal is. You awake? Yeah. I was awake till two. Oh. Okay. Because you were snoring. I don't snore. You were on your back. Must have been a dream. So not only you're on your back, but you have that pillow here now. So I was on the very, very edge of the bed. If you snore. Uh, I think you're imagining it, love. All right, bye. Now you're awake and dressed. Here's a nice cup of tea. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Tea or what? Is it chamomile or is it? <coughs> it's the lemon one. The lemon and ginger. And some biscuits for your pleasure. Well, thank you. So Marina, where are we going today? What's the name of this archaeological site? Excuse well, my ignorance. We're on the Peston uh, seashore, so we're going to the Peston uh, archaeological site. It's a UNESCO protected site. It's one of those treasures of humanity. Peston wasn't Latin, it wasn't Roman. Greeks colonised most of the south of Italy. They extended to Sicily and uh, they actually lived in their colonies for a long time and Pestum has the most beautiful temples in uh, optimal state of uh, conservation. I started off by digging a big hole and sticking these bricks under, it got us so far. <laughs> And then, what's he called? The man with the, the beard? The guy sells cars. The guy with the beard, what's he called? Luigi. Luigi, he brought the uh, plank there and the, the shovel. But Marina, it's just the shit that happens sometimes, isn't it? Yeah, especially <laughs> to annoy you. Because you get annoyed by these things, don't you? Yeah, I'm very hot, sweaty. So we did it. Vai ca Gerardo, ca pala. Gerardo dura sta ca pala proprio. Okay. So, here's the guys that rescued. So, Marina is speaking the lingo. Tu sei? Malio. Frank, Francesco, Pasquale. 
Esatto. Con la palla, ah, Gerardo ha fatto tutto lui. Luigi! Eh, Luigi, yes, grazie mille. Grazie. So, this, no, wait a minute. Gente, questa è Campania. Non fatevi vedere mai più, però. <laughs> He said never, never show yourself again. <laughs> okay. Thank you. This is the Italy I like. Yes. E regalo italiano di oh. Pestum. La pala. La pala! Tenetela a fare in culo. <laughs> okay, so probably the main problem of us getting stuck in the sun was the fact that this tire is completely bald and it was bald when we bought it in Yorkshire but you know it's the universe saying you need to change your tire so here we are now at the tire place so Giovanni here is uh, one of the guys that helped us at the beach, the guy survived cancer of the rectum, his life all boils down to helping me and Marina carry on with McVan life. What a day. Right, so we're waiting for the tyre to arrive, going to have a nice new tyre. Um, in the meantime, what's his name? Enzo. Enzo, who owns this place, he's uh, fixed the gears, um, he's topped up the oil, he's given her a bit of a look over, so gears fixed, oil and a new tyre, 35 euros, happy. And there's a woman who is also happy because she likes to budget. Of course I like. Made it? Yes, so a um, bit of a stressful morning, but the universe sorted it out. But it's amazing, isn't it? Uh, it's restored my faith in humanity. You know, we're in the middle of nowhere, an empty beach. Yeah, there was nobody. Completely stuck in the sun. The guy stops in a bike, starts chatting us, and uh, as in, he couldn't do much, but I mean, he could just keep us a bit of a company but because of him stopping uh luigi i'm digging a hole in my hands exactly with your hands luigi stops stealing bricks from and, the uh, restaurant next door i stole these giant yeah i had to climb under the fence but grab the stones and throw them onto the the, beach. the amazing thing was away luigi stops a car pulls out a shovel ish or badile and then stops bloody cars with people he doesn't know. He stopped those two guys, the first two young kids. Then he stops a big fat guy. And he just, in the middle of the road, he stops the guys and he says, get your ass out of the car and come and help. So, yeah. Hey, he gathers, what, five or six people? We didn't film the actual pushing us out there, but... Yeah, but, I mean, there was me plus, I think, five or six big guys. And they pushed us out. And the amazing thing is that one of the guys that was pushing us was a guy that, when was it, in March, was diagnosed with rectum cancer, had a massive operation, has a stoma, and uh, he was there pushing some uh, people he'd never seen before. They, know, they know about the cancer because it's on the clips before yeah no but i'm saying but i mean instead of being somebody who's just worried about himself and oh gosh i've got cancer and i might be dying he's actually out there helping other people people that he doesn't know so what's that for karma uh, by the way he's finishing his chemo, chemo, chemo sorry and um the doctors said he has a very high chance of recovery so i think that 
that's part of the reason why he's recovering so well. He's a lovely person. Giovanni is, I mean, he, he took us to the mechanic. He stayed with us until he saw what the problem was. And Luigi, the guy with the beard, the handsome man with the beard, his friend died in a road traffic accident, uh, had his legs cut off and he ended up having septicemia and died. But he's, since then, it's, his, it's been his mission to help people to, to, because he believes that karma will... will um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just it's, exactly the same philosophy we have, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, but the thing, the amazing thing is, I said it in a moment where I was a bit sceptical and you had lost a bit of your faith. You faith find, in Jesus? No. I seen Jesus yesterday. No, I say more, it's more about faith in people. This is a moment where the universe brings us people like this. Exactly. Oh, bloody Brexit. Oh, let's get out. Bloody Brexit. Bloody foreigners. These bloody foreigners help. Well, nobody, nobody forced them to stop there. You don't listen to the governments, the newspapers, the bollocks. People are people and your average person will help another person. It doesn't matter if you're white, black, yellow, religious, non-religious, whatever. Your average person will never cause trouble or wars. They'll just want to help people. We're being manipulated by the puppeteers. Anyway, on that note, we're now going to go and see... The temples. The ancient ruins of... And I forget the name all the time. Pestum. Remember the Pestum. 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 So, let's go. One, two, three... So uh, just to recap here, these are Greek yep. ruins, 2,005 year old Greek ruins when the Greeks occupied Italy. Southern Italy. Southern Italy. Because Italy has only been a country since... 1860. 1860. Before that, it was what? It was many little nations, but basically the big difference that you can see in Italian culture you've you've experimented it on your, your skin is the fact that Italy was never a uh, a country and in though that period of time all the southern Italy so Lilca where we were Calabria this part and part of Sicily especially the part where um, Vincenzo comes uh, from Agrigent and Syracuse and all that area. Well, Greek. The Romans came later. So we've got a lot of. Uh... The European history is about Greece. Look at it now. So here I am, sat in the old amphitheatre. Marina's doing a David Bailey. Give her my camera, you know. Keep her quiet. Although it doesn't keep her quiet because she keeps stopping everybody and chatting to them. That's what she does. But I can live with that. And when she's with me, it's like having your own tour guide. Free of charge. She knows a lot of stuff. She studied in classical history, so... Another string to her bow. So, I suppose I better go and find her, innit? Considering what happened this, this morning, morning, I mean, considering how the day started, I think this was the best way that the day could develop. I mean, look at this place. It's it's breathtaking. So I started this morning digging a hole and now 
I'm at the Temple of Neptune. The vibe is so ancient. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I could totally live in a place like this. It's so bloody peaceful. But even though this is a Greek temple, I do feel very Romany. Very sort of Italian, very Mediterranean. Romany actually is very gypsy. No, I don't mean Romany as in the gypsies. I mean, I feel Romany as in I feel like a Roman. Yeah. Romany. So, Roman, what about going to the museum and then taking a good bath because you stink? Yeah, good idea. Okay. We're showered. We're going to eat. We're settled for the night. It's been a long day. Marina's making noise. And Marina's trying to and make tea after showering. Considering how much footage I've taken these last couple of days, this might be the end of this episode of My Fan Life Life on the Road. So, until next time, it's ciao from me and it's ciao from the cook.